Hello everyone, this is Bethany Liskovitz, Pediatric Occupational Therapist with Emerge Pediatric. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the sensory systems. In OT, it's very common for us to get referrals for children who have difficulty with sensory processing. My hope with this video is to give parents a little bit more insight to analyze which of those sensory systems is giving their child a little bit more difficulty. We all process sensory information differently. We might be more attuned to some senses and less attuned to others, but where a problem might occur is if the way that we process individually doesn't really match up with the sensory input of our environment. So let's go ahead and dive in to all of the different senses that we use to process the world around us. The first senses that I'm going to talk about are what we often refer to as the five senses. They don't really need a lot of explanation. Um, the first being our visual processing, which is our sight, what we see. Some signs that your child might have differences in their sensory processing for their sight is if they get overwhelmed with busy visual environments. If there's a lot going on, they can't focus on one task. They're kind of jumping in between all the different tasks that are in that visual environment. Or if they tend to miss information that's provided to them visually. So if they skip items on a worksheet, that could be a sign of difficulty with visual processing. Another sign of atypical visual processing is difficulty telling the fine differences between two pieces of visual input. So that could be telling the difference between a B and a D. Or if you ask them to help um, organize the laundry, they have difficulty matching their socks. Finding those differences and similarities visually um, can be difficult for some ch children. Auditory processing, or what we hear, is the next area, the next sense that we often think about. Um, some clues that your child might be processing auditory information differently than their peers would be if they tend to overreact to certain sounds. Some um, big upset reactions to everyday sounds such as the vacuum cleaner, the hair dryer, the toilet flushing, or if they're under responsive to auditory input. So if you say their name but they don't respond, that can be a clue that they're processing auditory information differently than you or I might. Taste is the next area. Um, we have some children that we work with that really prefer a lot of the very strong taste. So they like spicy foods or salty foods, um, but they don't really tend to go for those more bland foods. They have trouble incorporating those into their diet. And then we have children on the other side where they're very sensitive to the different tastes of foods and will avoid or refuse foods that have um, what you or I might consider a regular intensity for taste. They really prefer just those bland tastes. Smell is the next sense. Children can be either over or under responsive to smell. They may not notice smells that are very obvious to others, such as if the trash is really stinky, or if there's a strong gasoline smell at the gas station, or they may be sensitive to smells and complain that either locations or objects smell funny and others might not notice that those things even have a smell to them at all. The last of what we consider our typical five senses is the sense of touch, our tactile sense. We work with a lot of children who are sensitive to touch and some signs that your child might be sensitive to touch Maybe that they're very particular about what type of clothing they will wear. They don't like to get their hands messy whenever they're playing. Or on the opposite end, your child might be under responsive to touch. If you tap them to get their attention, they don't really notice. They may not um, respond to small scratches or things that you feel should be painful for them. Both of those ends of the spectrum are signs that your child might have difficulty with tactile processing. In addition to the five senses that we typically think about when we think about sensory processing, there are also three hidden senses. And the first of these hidden senses is proprioception. Proprioceptors give our body and our brains information about where our body is in space. 
So this comes from our muscles and our joints and lets us know the position of our limbs and our body and then how much force we are exerting when we're moving these body parts. So if your child is under responsive to their proprioceptive input, they might appear clumsy or uncoordinated because they don't know where their body is in space. They might seek out additional proprioceptive input by jumping, pushing, and pulling more than other children their age. And they also might use an inappropriate amount of force for the activity that they're given. So this might be pushing too hard or too soft on their utensils, really pushing down on their crayon when they're coloring, or using too much force whenever they're petting an animal. The next hidden sense is the vestibular sense, and this comes from the fluid in your inner ears that provides your body a sense of movement. Think about um, whenever you were little and you used to spin around and around and you would get dizzy, you would still feel like you were moving after you stopped spinning, and that's because the fluid in your inner ears was still moving. So some signs that your child might have atypical vestibular processing might be that they don't get dizzy when other children do, or they may seek out excessive movement um, activities such as running, jumping, spinning, falling, maybe even taking unsafe movement risk to get that sense of movement if they're under registering it. Um, some other children might have atypical vestibular processing by not really registering the regular amounts of vestibular input that we get throughout the day. So little tiny shifts in our head position give us little bits of vestibular information, but if your child's not registering those little shifts, they might need to lean up against their desk to prop themselves up. They might lean on others or walls to compensate for that decreased vestibular processing. The final hidden sense is your interoceptive processing, and this comes from your child's organs. Some signs that your child's interoceptive processing is a challenge for them might be that they don't recognize when they're hungry, when they're full, they may not notice when they have to go to the bathroom, or they may not be able to tell you if they have a stomach ache. So this can definitely impact their regulation because a lot of those things are the basis of feeling calm and comfortable throughout their day. So if you feel that your child might be processing any of this sensory information differently than you or I might, and there's a mismatch between how your child processes and the, the demands of their daily environment, then I would encourage you to reach out to Emerge or to an OT in your area and get an occupational therapy evaluation because an OT can help kind of tease out which sensory systems are processing differently and then ways to help your child to feel more calm and comfortable with their sensory processing in their environment. Thank you.